In Venezuela, over 200 international observers arrived to accompany Sunday's popular consultation. Citizens will determine the execution of projects of local interest. The Palestinian Red Crescent reported 14 people killed amid a two-day massacre perpetrated by Israeli forces against the New Shams refugee camp. And in Iran, the government warned Israel about the danger of its military actions against its territory. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Lesus Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In Venezuela, the first meeting with more than 200 international observers for the National Reform 2024 was held this Saturday. The event was attended by members of the different communes of the country who spoke about the projects to be executed in the communities and how they will distribute the resources allocated to improve the quality of life of the inhabitants. Likewise, this Minister of Communes, Guy Bernandez, urged all the population to vote in this Sunday's participation exercise to preserve the legacy of Commander Hugo Chavez and demonstrate what a participative and protagonist democracy means. In this respect, authorities stated that the consultation will set an important precedent in the coordination of the country's social and communal actors and organizations. In Venezuela, a meeting for a social and global alternative brings together intellectuals, academics and activists in Caracas for three days to build a common agenda to confront imperialism. More than 60 delegates from different countries raised the importance of regional unity in the struggle against the capitalist hegemon and in defense of the peoples of the world. We are at a tipping point, like Rose Luxemburg said, it's either social Socialism or barbarism, that's where we are at. Barbarism has already become a reality and it's threatening with becoming the norm. And we cannot allow that. We must stand on our heritage, on our moral and dignity as a people, because our peoples have enough history. And that is the best answer we can give to organize ourselves, to articulate ourselves and make a great front, an anti-imperialist block for the defense and survival of humanity. Humanity's hope is found in the people of Cuba, Palestine, Nicaragua, and Venezuela, who resist in the face of imperialist threats and attacks. We will have not just a tool, not just a sheet of paper with some words and ink, but a powerful weapon of mass destruction against capitalism and imperialism at the historical moment. However, the United States is reluctant to accept that now the world is not unipolar, and that is why they show their intentions to use military force in order not to lose control of what they believe is theirs in Latin America, as described by Argentine analyst Attilio Boron. Richardson, the head of the Southern Command, what she wants is to keep China, Russia and Iran away from this whole region so that there is no influence because she knows that they are somehow contributing to the stabilization of these popular governments that need all the support they can get to face these broader unilateral measures that violate all international law because nobody has assigned to the United Nations in the Charter the right to say, I'm going to sanction this country and I'm going to carry out a coup d'etat against it. That is a brute force politics, de facto politics that has nothing to do with international law. Three days of meetings to continue listening to different voices with a single message, to move forward to transform humanity. En la Cámara de José Rondón, Luis Guillermo García Bencomo, para Telesur, Caracas, Venezuela. Ecuador is on the eve of power consultation and referendum despite the problems facing the country. This Sunday, April 21st, over 13 million citizens will cast their votes to solve the problems of violence associated with criminal counts linked to drug trafficking. In this eve of popular consultation, the blackouts are the leading characters of the week, including this Saturday. Therefore, the government announced that the power outages will be progressively decreasing and that on Sunday there will be no power interruptions. In this context, President Daniel Novoa renewed the state of emergency. The government declared a new state of exception justified by the alleged internal disturbance caused by the electricity sector emergency, which will be in effect for 60 days. The presidential decree establishes the activation of the armed forces and the national police, 
on the premise of guaranteeing the security of critical energy infrastructure facilities. This is in spite of the rejection expressed by teachers and other sectors of society that oppose the policy of militarization and repression undertaken by the Ecuadorian president, considering that it generates greater violence than it actually controls. The government of Ecuador stated through a press release state of emergency due to serious internal commotion and public distress is declared throughout the national territory caused by the emergency in electric power sector in order to guarantee the provision of public electric power service. This declaration is based on the factual situation described in the relevant section of this executive decree. Part of the release also states the declaration of state of exception due to serious internal commotion and public distress throughout the national territory caused by the emergency in the electric power sector will be enforced for 60 days. This deadline is based on the need to have adequate time to overcome the factual issues raised. The document specifies to provide for national police and armed forces mobilization intervention throughout the national territory duly coordinated to guarantee the security of critical energy infrastructure facilities in order to prevent sabotage, terrorist attacks or other threats that could affect their operation. In Cuba, the second flight of the Operation Transfer Cuban stock in Haiti arrived at the Ignacio Agramonte International Airport in Camagüey. The process of transferring Cuban citizens is organized by the authorities in Havana, several ministries and the Cuban embassy in Haiti. During the second phase of the operation, consisting on aerial returns, some 260 Cuban nationals are expected to return to the island. Likewise, the Cuban Foreign Ministry will inform about the re-entry of Cuban nationals until the operation is completed. Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega sent his regard to Cuban President Miguel Diaz Canel on the occasion of his birthday. In an official statement, Ortega said, Dear Miguel, all the respect and affection of the Nicaraguan people who recognize your immense work in the daily confrontation of, of the criminal U.S. blockade and in the clear sighted and consistent battles together with the dignified, most dignified people of Fidel and Raul. Ortega wished many more years and much more energies to continue fighting all battles and achieving all victories. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telestor English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates, and much more. All the stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back. The Palestinian Red Crescent reported on Saturday that 14 people were killed in the midst of a two-day massacre perpetrated by Israeli forces who stormed on Thursday New Shams refugee camp located on the outskirts of the city of Tul Karem. The Palestinian Health Ministry said that several people were injured, but the occupation army prevented the entry of medical teams for several hours. The brutal raid comes in a context of escalating violence in the occupied West Bank since the beginning of the genocide in the Gaza Strip on October 7th. Since that date, at least 479 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces or settlers in the West Bank. In Palestine, the West Bank dons paralyzed by a general strike to denounce the massacre perpetrated by Israeli forces in the Nur Sham refugee camp, where 14 people were killed. The official Wafa News Agency reported the closure of schools, universities, banks and stores in cities and towns of the West Bank, following the calls of the Palestinian forces and movements. Both the teachers' union and the transport union announced a total strike in support of the inhabitants of the Gaza Strip and the new Shams camp. The call for a general strike was made by the Palestinian National Liberation Movement, Fatah, and was supported by several factions, including the Hamas movement. Meanwhile, at least 16 people were killed in several Israeli attacks on the city of Rafah, 198 days after the beginning of the genocide in the Gaza Strip. Wafa News Agency reported that nine children were among those killed on Sunday. The occupation army carried out air and artillery attacks on four different houses in Rafah, claiming the lives of 16 people. 
In a preliminary balance, health authorities informed that since last October 7th, Israel has killed 34,049 Palestinians, most of them children and women, while about 77,000 have been wounded and thousands of corpses are under the rubble of devastated Gaza Strip. The United Nations advocates for peace between Palestine and Israel. The head of the UN Public Works and Relief Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Middle East, Philip Lazzarini, reaffirmed the rights of Palestinians and Israelis to a peaceful and stable future. He stressed that the wounds between the two nations could not be healed without empathy, the rejection of dehumanization and the misuse of new technologies in warfare. Lazzarini also denounced the murder of 178 humanitarian workers of the organization in the midst of the continuous Israeli attacks in the coastal enclave. The Iraqi resistance attack an Israeli target on Saudi in response to the violation of national sovereignty and the aggression against the camps of the popular mobilization forces. The Iraqi resistance thus confirmed the launching of drones on a key Israeli objective in the city of Eilat. In the meantime, they also affirmed that these actions are also in support of the Palestinian people and against the massacres of the Tel Aviv regime in the framework of its genocidal operation in the Gaza Strip. Should be noted that this military action materialized after the Iraqi resistance reported the death of one civilian and eight wounded after the explosion in the Kalus camp, north of Babylon, which houses the headquarters of the army, the police, and the popular mobilization forces. The government of Iran warned Israel about the danger of its military actions against its territory and stressed that widening the conflict is harmful to the region. The Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullah Hayan stated that his country has no intention of launching a new attack against Israel unless Tel Aviv attacks its interests again. The Iranian diplomat stressed his country's right to defend itself against Israeli aggression, such as the April 1st attack against its embassy in Syria, especially in the absence of any statement from international organizations regarding the recent Israeli attack on several Iranian provinces. The foreign minister stressed that Iranian defense systems were able to shoot down the drones as soon as they were spotted, which is evidence of their armed forces' readiness. The Iraqi Ministry of Foreign Affairs also warned on the dangers of military escalation in the region and expressed its concern after the Israeli attack on Isfahan city in Iran. The Iraqi Foreign Ministry stressed that the escalation should not distract public opinion from the crimes committed by Israel against citizens in the Gaza Strip. In this regard, it denounced the destruction and loss of lives resulting from the siege against Gaza while rejecting the decision of the UN Security Council for not granting full membership to Palestine. And the United States government fixed its position as it did not condemn Israeli attacks against Iran while affirming that it does not want the conflict to escalate in the Middle East. According to local media, the U.S. Department of Defense claimed that an aggression against the Islamic Republic of Iran is not appropriate. According to the sources for the defense agency of the Northern Nation, Israel engages in dangerous actions and President Joe Biden's support for Tel Aviv puts the country in the line of fire. These statements come after White House spokeswoman Karine Jean-Pierre confirmed that the U.S. government has no comment on the Israeli attacks on Iran. We have a final short break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English-speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on screen to join directly and share the link to reach more people. Comes on news coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean as well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and informed with Telesur. Final short break, don't go away. Welcome back. In Russia, authorities have evacuated over 2,800 people in several regions of the country because overflowing of the Tobol River. The Russian Ministry for Emergency Situations said Tobol River water level has reached 970 centimeters above the danger line in central Kurgan region and that the water level keeps rising. In fact, experts say according to forecasts, the river will continue to increase its water volume until it reaches its maximum level in the next two to three days. 
Authorities say emergency workers are reinforcing the structure of the Kurgan Dam while they continue to evacuate civilians in the areas that could be affected by new floods. On the other hand, in Mali on Saudi, health authorities stress that the exceptional heat wave hit in the country with temperatures above 45 degrees Celsius has caused dozens of deaths. In this regard, Dr. Ibrahim Fold, director of a health center in the city, pointed out that there is a very high mortality rate related to dehydration and fever. The deadly hot weather has affected Mali and Burkina Faso in the month of April with temperatures above 45 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, climate models show that heat waves of this magnitude observed in the region in March and April 2024 would have been impossible without the 1.2 degrees Celsius of global warming recorded to date, which consists, attribute, consists scientists attribute to human-induced climate change. Meanwhile, in the United Arab Emirates, local media highlighted the flooding in the city of Sharjah following the heaviest rains ever recorded in the country. In this sense, the local authorities ensured the deployment of volunteers to provide food, water and medical assistance to the citizens residing in the community. The storms hit the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain after hitting Oman, where 18 people were killed, including several children. Should be noted that an environmental report stated that the climate of the United Arab Emirates had warmed by 0.4 degrees, meanwhile assuring a major increase in average annual precipitation in the southern part of the Arab Peninsula. Let's now go to the world of sports with basketball notes because on Saturday begins the postseason of the National Basketball Association. In this way, 16 teams that are divided in two conferences will start their way to dispute the championship final in June. It is worth noting that the defending champion Denver Nuggets will play as the second seed for the Western Conference, while the Miami Heat, who lost in the final, barely made it to the postseason and will start their series as the East Conference eighth seed. In this, this NBA season, proof that it has a global reach and a clear example is that NBA announced an, on opening day a record of 125 international players from 40 countries, including a record number of players from Canada and France. The 2024 NBA postseason has some remarkable observations that are of interest to global basketball fans, and here we will share some of them. In this sense, the first seed in the Eastern Conference, the Boston Celtics, will enter the postseason for the 10th consecutive season, currently the longest streak in the league. In this sense, Oklahoma City Thunder, Orlando Magic and Indiana Pacers will make it into the playoff for the first time since 2020. On the other hand, the Milwaukee Bucks advanced to the postseason for the 8th consecutive season. In turn, as negative achievement, the Golden State Warriors will miss the postseason for the first time since 2021. Meanwhile, the Charlotte Hornets will skip the playoffs for the eighth consecutive season, currently the longest active postseason drought in the NBA. And this Sunday, the world of football witnesses the most watched game of club football, El Clasico. Real Madrid received Barcelona at the Santiago Bernabeu. Barcelona goes into the classical suffering the aftermath of defeat against PSG and with a heated locker room after the statements made by Gundogan and Araujo. Unlike Barcelona, Real Madrid are on the upswing after heroically reaching the Champions League semi-finals after a deadly duel against Manchester City. Vinicius and Carvajal had to withdraw from the match with discomfort, but it seems that both will be fit for the Clásico. Coach for Los Blancos, Carlos Ancelotti, said Sunday's game is a great opportunity to seal the team's leadership in the race for La Liga's title. In Spain, the first traveling migrant book fair born out of self-management as a process of decolonization concludes this Saturday in the city of Barcelona. The event started last Monday April 15th and was attended by different publishers of the country, 
In the framework of the Book Festival of San Jordi, which seeks to publicize the largest number of works by migrant authors. Bibi Alfonsin, Moha Yerhu, Takmari Olivar, and Silvia Ramirez also took part in the event and discussed the creation and culture of migrant people. Behind this collective literary commission, there are other organizations that are supporting the movement as a synonym of migration and union of cultures between countries of the world. We have come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website, telestoryenglish.net. Also join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telestory English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.